next we are going to talk to Donna, and it's her birthday, and she is very familiar with your work, Seven. So, Donna, you're on the air. Okay, thank you. Happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> I have passed my second Saturn return, so those of you who know astrology have an idea of how old I am. Um, this is my question, Seven. Thank you for tonight, too. It's amazing. You're more than welcome. Uh, one of the things, I, I listen to you frequently. I listen to your works, and one of the things that I know that you speak on all the time is all is self. This has been a troublesome area for me in my journey. I would like, if you can, Help me to understand that statement, especially when subjects like that and alien, which seems outside of self, are brought up. If you could give me a, a some visualization or greater, some way of getting me to click to that, sure. I would appreciate it. It's, it's very simple, and, that, and these questions are the best questions. Now, when you watch light shine into a prism, what you see is the prism then splits up into seven colors, so it divides itself. So in the beginning was the word, the word did not come back void, meaning that there is a word that creates worlds. And when it goes into a world, it separates itself into seven spheres and then two hidden, which is white and black. White and black are colors too in that, in that kind of spectrum, so you have nine. So then when I say all is self, I'm talking about the concepts of the unbegotten meaning before you come in the prism. Because everything in the prism is, under, is polarized into its separatism. And that's what's keeping it here. That's what's holding it in a mirror or a crystal. Then when you escape this, when you actually say to yourself, but what is it about that I keep thinking about it if it doesn't exist? Meaning that who is the prime mover? Look up this term, prime mover. The prime mover or the prime mobile is what they say is spinning the galaxy. And they sometimes, oh, that's God. Or they always give it that role. Who's the prime mover? Us. We are the prime movers. So if we decide not to move into the control point and go into all the self rather than the seven cards. See, it's this seven system, which is how they calculate the septidecimal on the, on the, um, <laughs> on the stock market is trading us. You see what I mean? Like, look at, look at what we're dealing with here. That's why the knowledge is deep insight. Because this, it's the trading is taking place with this birth certificate and this, these different certifications that we've agreed to, we've pledged allegiance to. Then we become in the system that has set itself up on division. That's why the God is deuce. Right? Divided worlds have uses. This is what we need to understand, and it's understood with our growth. Because then you can look back and say, oh, it took me all that to learn this. <laughs> and it's over. It's collapsed. And it tends to you actually brought all of what you've been through into a solid point. It is no longer flying everywhere and flying over everyone. And then when you have it now back in your grasp, that's what you implode with. So until then, there will be anchors. Meaning that we'll lodge ourselves in with Illuminati's and different kind of art forms with different symbols that make us mad or make us happy. And still realizing that you have to make yourself happy. So what are they saying? You have to make the world the way that you want it to be. First one, start with a dream. Obviously you have to work on the body. But in the dream, when the dream begins to run parallel to the reality, then at a certain point you can walk into the dream or you can see the tomorrow or the next day or a few more days in the dream, this then becomes what happens to you when you supposedly die or divide. <laughs> you divide, meaning the soul is supposed to leave the body, but it actually doesn't happen. They agree to stay together. The body transforms, so you take the memories with you. You leave with the chrysalis. Chrysalis has so much uses on the galactic plane Astral plane, it's like you just received a medal, a badge of honor. 
because it contains all the geometry of stuff that happened here on the world. Now, remember, this is a map. And I want to, get, I want to make sure that you understand this, that what happens here is that we have to navigate through our own consciousness, utilizing these rudimentary building blocks of how things got started. And you see then the ones that are, that, you know, I sometimes say the ones we don't speak of, but the ones that are causing the negativity as children. You see them in their primordial state. That's why it's primordial gods. They're beyond thinking. What happens is, is that some people, if they want to understand what these individuals really feel about it, some people are doing things on the internet trying to say they want to be the Illuminati and get on their team, etc. It's like when you walk down the sidewalk and you're not conscious of an ant. You don't even think about it. That's where their consciousness is in this vacuum called the womb. So then you understand mom. See, mom, either way, it didn't matter if Yada Baal was going to do anything. If, you're, if the God ever came to the world and said he was supreme, he forgot to realize he was still in the world. And understand, what are you inside of? <laughs> and that then would be the supreme being. And so this is where we return to. We leave the spectrum, we leave the pyramid, we leave the tetragrammaton, the 26 keys, then the ones that are missing, the other 26 underneath it. We leave the arc forms and we bud something new because we've taken on that and then even grown from it. See, some people are, are trying to figure out what is deprogramming. Deprogramming is not just erasing everything. Hello? <laughs> We're trying to salvage certain things here. There is great worth in what we've discovered and learned. So to really, really, to, to harbor, to bring a ship in a harbor, you must connect your organic, you must connect to the organic grid, meaning that to bring, where do you keep your ship? Where is it? And then so this is what you'll also see then, it's seeing things in a higher light, in a tense. It's really ethereal, it's beyond light. Okay, so when you see something then in its higher light, then you don't see it as it is right now. You see it as a child, it's a child. Y'all to bail, you're a child. And that's why most of these New Age books do begin, the deeper ones, they explain to you that the entity that is causing the most chaos is actually a child. Because it's still in this immature stage of not realizing that all is so. Are we talking about ourselves? See, the funny part about it is, is that every chakra that I went through, there was a different opponent. But when I started learning, I was staring in the face of a mirror. It wasn't so fearsome after that. <laughs> and then I realized that this is your biorhythm. This is your inheritance. Do not walk out on your inheritance. Do not abort. And that's the key in the message. Do not give away your memories. That is your currency. In, this, in all of this of what you're seeing here, is sometimes it's too much for them to comprehend. But you don't have to anymore. This is really simple. Clean your filters. The, the forces and the powers and the honors and all of that have arrived already, but they are subtle. So what happens is, is that we keep seeing them in their lesser light because we keep looking at them. You see what I mean? Like when we look at what is your identity of the real king? What is your identity of the real queen? And are you seeing that? Or are you seeing them over in London on the island in Atlantis playing around, jumping through portals in the tunnels of Set? What they learn from the pyramids this is the other thing, because you know there's a message to every color, race, and creed, but you know, I'm still African American. So to my people, I say, if you want to say that you're God or supreme being, then you also have to take the responsibility of what happened. And then you'll watch them walk away. Well, what do you mean what happened? We do it, we did everything right. Come on. That's not how the universe ever worked. The universe gives you what you put in. Now, guess what though? The universe. It, when it pays, or when it reaps, it takes what you have and does it with it. It doesn't have interest. Look, God is a banker. 
Think about what I'm saying. It, but the universe doesn't have interest. It takes what you have and it divides it. It's almost like you seeing a cookie cutter with 12 slices on it and it just stamps over what you call currency or whatever you got left. And then it divides it and it takes this portion and divides it amongst the children and keeps moving to the next being. You see? So while we're in this, because <laughs> like I said, today is a magnificent day. I actually got a chance to be able to give the information in a concise way that I feel like that if individuals really tune into what I'm saying, then they'll get the keys to everything and they'll know what to do. And this will subsequently cause a chain reaction of the lightning uh, of the organic grid, which is actually a system that can repair many other individuals, meaning to put their two sides back together, that need much more deeper. They need dream time, <laughs> meaning that the ones that work with them work with them through the dreams because you can learn aeons worth of knowledge within what you would call for humans years. That's why I say, you know, a day on this world is a thousand years to God. And I want to tell that, individual, that brother that called earlier, the thing about it is, is that the title still God, if you have been made to be below it, is higher than you. So Saturnalian principle is, is that as base pillar, if they can debase you, meaning make you less than them, think like them, then they can stand on top of you as long as they choose not to think about you. <laughs> this is alchemy. The evil side of it. We, we, still have a, we still have a couple of callers, so I think you made your point. Okay. And um, want to, um, Donna, wish you a happy birthday, and thank you so much for calling in. Thank you, Donna. I wish I had time for another question. But, uh, thank you okay. for listening. Yeah, yeah we have to be seven. We're waiting. Thank you so I much. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye. Woo, we may have to take it 15 minutes okay. over. Okay, so, um, yeah, we've, we've got... Five minutes left, so keep that in mind. Um, we are going to um, talk to our friend Joseph. Hello, sweetie, how are you? Hello, my dear. I'm very well. And hello, my brother James. What a brilliant and glorious exposition you have given us today. Lots of food for thought. Thank you, Joseph. I want to share, you and I have a love of words. It's, it's very obvious. Uh, in studying the Gnostic Gospel of Mary Magdalene, I ran across a word that I did not know. It was a Greek word, and when Peter said to Yeshua, why do you spend so much time with this woman? You know women cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Well, that pushed the button. And then when Yeshua responded to him, he said, I have made, a, made her an anthropos. And it's mistranslated in most Bibles as, I have made her a man. But that's not the word. Right. The word is a fully evolved human being, totally male and totally female in the same body. Right. You're speaking, to, you're speaking to one of those right now, and that was quite a revelation for me. And I, I think you know exactly what I'm talking about. So I just wanted to thank you, and I wanted to share that term with you. I know there are others waiting to talk, but I feel truly, truly uh, expanded by your, by your sharing with us tonight. Thank you. Thank you. The Gnostic name is Achimoth, but that is the, the actual uh, Dakini name, courtesy of John Lamb Lash of the incarnate androgynous. Ah, uh, okay. Excellent. Well, Thank you, Joseph, so much for calling. You're very welcome, darling. Bye-bye. 